Hey everybody, what is going on? It's your boys, the 33. Welcome you to this week's Anarchy Analysis match a week between XL Esports and Schalke. This game, there wasn't too much in terms of team fighting, and as such, we're realistically only going to be covering where the game was flipped around into a pretty much Schalke favoured game. But nonetheless, I've got nothing more to say than DJ. Spin that dial as we head into Champion Select. As we load into the draft, Schalke are on blue side, XL on red, the first six bands, let's go. Thrash, first band, S tier support currently in the meta. Obviously, provides a lot of safety to champs like Ash and Aphilios. Granted, Aphilios have fallen off in recent patches thanks to Nurse. Volibear has not been nerfed at all in recent patches, so Schalke's band there, very strong. Orion and Azir on XL's side, two very strong blind pickable mids, so removing that off the field is good. And now we get to the interesting band. This one I want to take a while to talk about. It's Caitlyn. Kate, as a whole, has been picked up a lot more by teams in patch 10.15 because they want to be sieging and going for objectives. Caitlyn has picked a lot of buffs up in recent patches, and she's at that stage where she is playable in pro play and she usually goes alongside a Morgana as a pick because that creates so much poke and harass that she can essentially push the enemy team back to their turret and as such make it a very hard lane to deal with. Now XL ban out the Sona as the last ban of this phase which is another big pickup in the current meta in patch 10.15 and it was actually ran in 10.14 by uh, C9 in the LCS against Team Liquid in a sort of meta where they used a the Hecarim alongside it and it was very good I guess because it sets up team fights you're wanting to team fight well and you get so many shields especially if you pair it with a Lux which you tend to do and you technically if you ban out the Sona you're removing the entire sort of a uh, combo in that bot lane so you're essentially getting a two for one ban there. Similarly with the cape ban is a two for one ban as a whole. But that's the first round of bans, let's look at the first picks. Okay so first pick is immediately locked in which is a Senna. A very strong supportive ADC in the current meta that's kind of been left untouched. She has received recent buffs to how she gets her souls and as such she's been Rising in terms of priority for teams as Aphilios has dropped off. She's very safe in her kit. She's got a stun. She's got heals. She's got everything you need to be a very strong champion. And usually you lock in some heavy engage to go alongside it. Or maybe a protective support to can well deny it from the opposition. But she provides a lot to the team and what do we see XL lock in? Well, it's going to be the counter champion that's also stayed at the top of the pile in Ezreal. This champion I don't think is ever going to fall out of the meta because of how useful he is as a champ. You've got a high amount of poke, you've got a lot of damage in that kit that refreshes the cooldowns of your other abilities and you've also got tools to reposition and tools to pump out um, a lot of damage in your ultimate. And as such, very strong champion to go against the Senna. It is kind of an even matchup because Senna can obviously out heal the damage pumped out by Ez if it's used to avoid the poke. But you have to then realize the next lock in for XL kind of means that that Ezreal is going to be a main focal point for them as they decide to lock in the Galio. Now Galio is a very useful champion in terms of repositioning in fights and setting up protective plays and roaming around the map with his ultimate. He can essentially just restart a fight, protect his champions that are being killed off by that magical barrier that he grants them and realistically he's a kind of a split for push threat that most teams have to deal with. Finally, the last two pickups here for Schalke in this first phase is going to be the Sedge and the Camille. This is a very unique pairing that I love so much because you can proc 
the Sejuani's uh, passive that she grants you to lock him up with the E pretty easily with the Camille because she can get so many autos off in a second because of her Q passive and how her Q works. It's very good in terms of actual power in the combo and realistically it is a very strong team comp and team fighting comp Schalke have drafted so far. But the last pick to talk about in this phase is gonna be the Jax. Jax, strong champion, can be played jungle. Highly likely it's going to the top lane because Kryz loves to play his carries. It does counter the Camille slightly because you're obviously forcing the opponents to do some sort of reaction to it because you obviously have that counter strike. You're essentially going to try and nullify the combo that the Sedge and the Camille are looking for by using that counter strike effectively. And as such, it's very intriguing how they're going to play around the Jacks in that top side. And it kind of does focus Schalke towards the mid or the bottom part of the map in order to get a combination off. So let's skim through these last bands here. Olaf Trundle and Corky in Casio. I like these bands from XL as well as the Schalke bands because, well, no, I don't like the Schalke bands too much. But XL's bands, Corky and Casio, let's focus in on them right now. Corky, very strong pickable champion because the Azir was already banned. It doesn't force special onto, say, maybe a LeBlanc or a champion that can obviously poke. Syndra is still technically available, but I love the Casio. It's a strong counter pick of Galio, and as such, banning it by XL means that the Galio will not be basically in danger as much as anticipated because uh, Schalke did not lock in their mid laner in that first round of picks, so that makes a lot of sense. Olaf and Trundle, Olaf reduces CC. You look at the uh, Schalke lineup so far. Sedge, uh, Camille, Senna all have a lot of CC in their kit. And it also, that combination does kind of get countered if it's an Olaf pick. So I do like that lock in here by, or ban technically by Schalke there. And Trundle just removes the threat of a Sejuani because he just nullifies tanks in the current meta. And as such, I like... Okay, I do like these bands from Schalke. <laughs> I've decided on it. So, let's move into the last round of picks, which we've got a little bit to talk about. So, this phase we see Set, Yumi, Tom, Kench, and Zoe locked in. Let's talk about this XL side. Set's first pick, which is good because it still leaves a lot of flexibility into that champion's position. It still can technically go to the support role. It can still technically go in the jungle and technically top, but Jax is more than likely going to Kreis, who does like to play them carry oriented top laners. And Jax technically does slightly counter Camille and realistically won't go there. So it's realistically jungle or support that says gonna go. And that gives SO4 really no information. And as such, they lock into Tom Kench, which provides a lot of safety to a Senna. It also repositions, and this Tom Kench also has a combo that we're going to discuss in a few minutes with the Sejuani that we see quite prominently in this clip that we're going to discuss. And the Zoe, very strong mid laner. Obviously, you have a lot of poke. You got a lot of harassment in that kit. Spell Thieves. It just makes you a menace. You use phase rush phenomenally well with that champion. And obviously makes it onto my ban list of champions that I absolutely think should be removed from this game. And the last pick to discuss is the Yumi. I'm surprised it went that long with the Yumi being left open. It has received slight buffs in current patches after it received that nerf where it makes it... 15% of your mana cost for your E, so you're not chucking them out constantly in team fights. It now is obviously down. You now get percentage mana back with your passive whenever you auto attack someone, so you cannot stay bound onto a target 
pretty much the entire game like you used to be able to and that becomes very interesting as a champion because you're having to deal with some limitations that you didn't have before and as such it's going to be interesting as Excel drafting this very poke heavy split pushy roam champ team comp and Schalke drafting a team fighting comp that's looking to pick off members with the Camille and lock you up so that you cannot get away. But without further ado, let's get into today's clip where we're going to be breaking down the team fight. So this play is kicked off with Schalke taking down this tower and then immediately recalling and it being just stopped by a true shot barrage and they have to go to retreat back to a safe place in order to go back to base. Excel begin to push a wave topside as the Yumi then goes off to clear the vision placed by Schalke. Seeing the Yumi detach this stops Schalke's backs and they begin to set up a play. Sedge is coming up the river to stop Ezreal from going down the nearest route for him and Camille is teleporting in behind the wall if Ezreal Arcane shifts past it. But Schalke spot a stray cat and they decide to split the targets with the four members coming for this fight. The boar rider and the catfish naturally target the other animal and that leaves the steel shadow and the redeemer to go after the prodigal explorer and put him in a museum. Ezreal is killed off and then the cast acclaimed combo happens. Now this is a very clever combo as it is a combination of two stacking abilities that both champions can technically perform. So let's focus in on Tom Kench for the first bit. He needs to stack up three auto attacks when you s and you'll see this red fish. He then uses his Q, that stuns you. You basically get the gist of this combo and that is the first part of it and you basically combo that in with this girl's abilities. So Sejuani stacking is slightly different. Yes, auto attacks affect it, but her abilities do as well. And other autos from other champions also affect it. So the more autos put onto the singular target, it means that that target will have the mallet fully glowing before anyone else gets it. And as such, it becomes very useful to combine that in with the Tom Kench stacks because Tom Kench can stack the stacks of the Sejuani. Yeah, you start to see why it's a big map because it stacks upon stacks of damage. And essentially, that damage gets exposed directly onto a poor little Yumi, the one target that has the least amount of health in the game and is probably the squishiest member on your team. And yeah, that essentially, because the bot lane of XL gets killed off, that gives so much pressure for Schalke that they're able just to snowball the game from here and decimate XL. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 